Hello and welcome back to the Earth Food First podcast. I'm your host, Lindsay Navama, cookbook author, toddler mama, food lover, and certified integrative nutrition coach on a mission to reimagine kid food culture. We recently launched our A to Z Veggie Alphabet Challenge series, where we explore the wide world of vegetables one alphabet letter at a time. In each A to Z Veggie Adventure episode, we approach vegetables thinking about three words, curiosity, seasoning, and celebration. You see, kids become curious about vegetables when we celebrate them often and learn how to season and prepare them in a way that really amplifies their flavor. So when we make learning to enjoy veggies an actual adventure, everyone benefits, including our kids and their view of vegetables. These short mini episodes are meant to inspire your family to try new vegetables often and avoid veggie ruts, learn to prepare and season them in different ways, and understand more about which vegetables do what for our bodies and minds. Today's episode is all about veggies starting with the letter B, and we're going to be exploring six of them. So by the end of this episode, you'll know more about broccoli, Brussels sprouts, beets, bok choy, butternut squash, and batata, my favorite one on the list. For all six B vegetables, I will walk you through a quick sensory exploration. And this is a fun exercise you can do with kids at the grocery store or at home where they can use their five senses to explore newer vegetables. We also talk about various ways to cook them and enjoy them, and then the magic powers also known as their health benefits, and finally, their seasonality. So let's get to it. We're going to start with broccoli, and let's get really honest for a minute. This hearty, cruciferous vegetable is nobody's friend when overcooked, which it is all too often. However, when properly prepared, broccoli is absolutely one of our family's favorite veggies. And I also want to tell you, Do not toss the broccoli stalk because when you peel it, whether you eat it cooked or raw, it's absolutely one of the best parts of the vegetable. So if you have a kid who is unsure about eating broccoli, try to describe it to them like this. It's like a small tree with these thick trunks and stalks and tiny little leaves in tight bunches at the top. When we eat it raw, it sounds really crunchy. And when we roast it, it becomes a lot sweeter. Can you taste the difference? So talking to your kids about a new vegetable like that with that enthusiasm and excitement and helping them picture it as something besides a vegetable will take you so far. All right, how do we prepare and enjoy broccoli? So it can be roasted, raw, boiled, blended, or stir fried. If you wanna roast it, I love just drizzling the florets and the peeled stems with some good avocado oil and salt and pepper, and you just roast it at 400 for 20 to 25 minutes. You just want it to be bright green and fork tender. So um, like a little bit slightly charred. You can also eat it raw if you just really finely chop it into like a lettuce-free salad or a broccoli slaw. If you're gonna boil it, you only need two to four minutes and do it in salted water. This is gonna add so much flavor to your broccoli and do it until they are just bright green. That is going to prevent overcooking. Finally, we can blend it for soups and you can also freeze it once cooked for smoothies. You can flash stir fry it with coconut oil or other bee veggies like bamboo shoots and Brussels sprouts. Now let's move on to the magical powers that broccoli possesses. So there are three reasons that our bods love some broccoli. It's very high in vitamin C, vitamin K, and folate, which are crucial for immune function, bone health, and cell growth. Just half a cup of broccoli has 70% of your daily value of vitamin C. And it also has three grams of protein per cup, making it relatively high in protein for a green vegetable. So when can you buy broccoli? In most areas, usually year round, but it's at its peak season in cooler weather. So it's the very best in spring and fall. Okay, let's move on to our good friend, the Brussels sprout. 
These guys get a bad rap when they are cooked wrong, but they are oh so delicious when cooked right. I have personally turned many Brussels sprout haters into lovers of these round mini green cabbages. Roasted, they can caramelize, shredded, they can be eaten raw, and they're crunchy, or you can flash fry the leaves for extra crispy little chips. So how do I love to enjoy my Brussels sprouts? In my cookbook, Hungry for Harbor Country, I have a recipe for roasted Brussels with butternut squash, sour cherries, pecans, cinnamon, sugar, and chili. And that is a great gateway recipe for anyone who is Brussels sprout hesitant. If you want to eat them raw, a food processor or a mandolin is very handy, but you can also shred them really fine with a sharp chef's knife. Now let's talk about the magical powers of the Brussels sprout. These are mighty mini gut guardians. Brussels sprouts are basically bite-sized superheroes of the veggie world, packing a powerful punch with their high levels of vitamin C and antioxidants. They're like little green shields sort of defending your body against illness and inflammation. These tiny cabbage lookalikes are really champions of gut health. And thanks to their impressive fiber content, which keeps your digestive system happy and humming along, you won't have any unwanted traffic jams. Brussels sprouts are also stealthy cancer-fighting ninjas, armed with sulforaphane, a potent compound that targets and neutralizes harmful cells. When are they in season? So Brussels sprouts are typically the best in fall and winter, and that's why you see them in so many holiday dishes, but um, you can definitely find them year round in many markets. Now let's talk about one of Stella's favorite vegetables, and that is the beet. These deep red or golden globes are roots with a very mild sweetness and sort of an earthy flavor, and then they have these great leafy green tops. Don't throw those away because they are delicious once you wash them and you can saute them or put them in soup. So how do we enjoy the beloved beet. You can roast them, you can eat them raw, you can eat them boiled or steamed. When we roast them, it really brings out their natural sweetness and kind of intensifies the flavor. So you wanna roast them at 400 for about 45 to 60 minutes if you're roasting them whole um, or just about until fork tender. And if you want to wrap them in foil or parchment paper, that will keep your beets more moist. And then once they're cool, you can just take your hands and the skin will literally just slough right off. Very easy to peel them by hand. You also can eat them raw, so you would want to peel them first, and then I like to shred them with like a cheese shredder, um, and you can put them in salads, or you can make like a beet slaw with them. Now, my favorite way to cook beets is just to boil them. It is so simple, literally throw them in a pot of salted water. Um, I'm saying salted water, you'll hear me say that when we're cooking vegetables, it gives the vegetables a lot more flavor. So add some like good, real Redmond salt, right? Something that has some minerals and just uh, boil them in a pot. And then um, they usually take about 30 to 45 minutes. If you chop them up into cubes, you might cut that time in half if you're short on time. And then you can just, again, peel the skin off with, with your hands. They're so versatile, boiled beets, roasted beets. Um, you can just add them as like a side dish to a dinner. You can throw a little olive oil on them, toss them with some goat cheese and maybe some sesame seeds or um, sunflower seeds, add them to a salad. Um, and then you can also do things like make a beet hummus. So you could blend them up with some chickpeas, um, something like that. You can steam beets. It might take a little bit longer, but it does hold in more of the nutrients. So that's another way to um, prepare them. And Stella's favorite way to enjoy beets, whether they are out of a can or freshly uh, boiled, is just with a little drizzle of balsamic vinegar on top. Frozen beets are also excellent in smoothies. So again, you can buy them like pre-cooked in a package or in a can. Just make sure there's no added sugar in the can. Um, and then you can freeze them and add them to your smoothies. What are the magical powers of beets? Beets are nutrient rich, like dollar, 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 dollar signs. So rich. Beets are sort of like a best friend for your heart, your brain, and 
blood and your overall energy, packed with nitrates that can help lower blood pressure and improve blood flow. They can help keep your heart and your brain happy and sharpen focus. For athletes, they're like a secret weapon to powering you through workouts and leaving you feeling unstoppable. So this makes Beats the perfect snack right before a sporting game for yourself or your kiddos. Beets are also a good source of vitamin C, which supports immune function, and a source of folate or vitamin B9, which is really important for pregnant women to support fetal development and prevent neural tube defects. They also have vitamin B6, which is involved in over 100 enzymatic reactions in the body and helps regulate blood sugar levels and reduce the risk of heart disease. When are we eating beets? Beets are widely available year round, but truly the best season for beets is in the cooler months. So that's gonna be late summer, fall, and winter. Now let's head over to bok choy. Bok choy is a great veggie to use when starting to introduce your kiddos to greens and salads. It's a staple in Asian cuisine and bok choy almost looks like a cross between celery and spinach, but with smooth white crunchy stems and then these kind of bright green leaves on top. We love baby bok choy because it's very tender, very mild in flavor, but we also like the larger heads of bok choy because they're great chopped up in salads. How can we enjoy our bok choy? Raw, stir-fried, sauteed, and grilled are my favorite ways. So my absolute number one favorite way to eat it is raw. And this is a way that most people don't think of, but it's so perfect for salad because it's basically like having two vegetables in one, right? You have the crunchy white stock, so you were using that maybe instead of celery, and then the leafy greens instead of adding spinach to your salad. So you have this high crunch factor and a very mild um, green leaf. I also like using like a sesame peanut lime dressing um, on a bok choy salad, but it's super versatile. So any way you want to dress it, you do you. Now, Bok choy is stir fried very often. I don't stir fry a lot because it requires more oil, but stir frying bok choy is great because it allows you to cook it really quickly and keep that crunch uh, without letting like all of the water um, out of it, which can make it a little bit too soggy. If you're stir frying it, you can use it with seasonings like garlic, ginger, soy sauce, or oyster sauce, and you just cook it for a few minutes until it's bright green, and then you can eat it right away. So you can also grill bok choy. If you buy the little baby bok choy or the big heads, you just cut them in half and then put them face down on the grill with some oil and salt and pepper. And you just need like two to three minutes and it's kind of almost like a grilled Caesar salad, right? You could even use a Caesar dressing, but with bok choy, that's a good idea. And then the grill just leaves them lightly charred, but very tender. Okay, so I actually avoid boiling or steaming bok choy because for me, they just get too soft and wilted. It contains a lot of water, and so it's just not the method that I prefer. All right, how is bok choy serving your body? What are the magic powers it has? So bok choy is high in vitamin A, C, and K, as well as minerals like calcium and potassium. It's a nutrient powerhouse that supports immune health, bone strength, and overall well-being. When are we going to eat our bok choy? So in general, you can expect bok choy to be at its peak freshness and flavor during the fall and winter seasons, but you can usually find it year round in many marketplaces. We are now at butternut squash. This is probably my favorite squash. It is sweet and nutty and just oh so comforting in the winter. Um, it's a perfect squash for soups, roasted side dishes, or pureeing into like creamy pasta sauces. These squash are light beige in color and smooth on the outside and they're almost shaped like a Russian doll where they're like kind of narrow and round on the top and then they have this big bulb at the bottom. Inside, they're just like this beautiful light orange color. So here's a tip when you buy them. You want to get the squash that's the longest on the top with a small bulb. If it has a big bulb and barely any on the top, um, you're going to get all seeds, right? Because the squash is all inside the top of it and then the seeds are all inside the bottom. Okay, so how are we going to enjoy and prepare our butternut squash? You can roast it, steam it, and grill it. Those are my three favorite ways. Roasting is definitely the number one way I prepare it. And you can buy butternut squash frozen, already 
cubed for you. You can buy it at the store already cubed. But if you're doing it yourself, you're going to use a really sharp knife to peel off that outer layer and then you'll seed it and chop it up before you, you roast it. If you're roasting it, you just put it on a cookie sheet with maybe some olive oil or avocado oil, salt and pepper, any other seasoning you want, and you roast it at 400 for about 25 to 30 minutes, or again, until fork tender. You can also steam this uh, squash, and this is a really good way if you're introducing it to like your baby who's over six months old for the first time, steaming it makes it really soft so you can either then mash it for them or you can puree it. Um, or if you're doing baby lead weaning, you can let them kind of pick it up and just like mush it in their hands and explore it on their own. And then finally, you can grill it. And if you're going to grill it, it's a really fun way to create kind of like a very whole food veggie burger. So you can peel the butternut squash and then chop it into big, like thick one inch rounds. Um, and then you can grill those and put them between like a burger bun or lettuce bun. Um, you're just brushing with olive oil and they need about eight to 10 minutes per side. Okay. So I want to talk about the seasoning that butternut squash really loves because there's so many of them and they're so delicious. When you pair it with browned butter, nutmeg, cinnamon, sage, allspice, or ginger. So you'll notice a theme in all the warm flavors. They all go really well with butternut squash. What are the magic powers? Butternut squash is loaded with essential nutrients like vitamin A to support your eyesight, vitamin C, potassium, and fiber. These nutrients support overall health, boost immune function, and promote healthy digestion and can help maintain a healthy heart. So the season for butternut squash is typically during the fall and winter months. So harvest time for butternut squash tends to begin in like the very late summer months and then extend in through the autumn season when availability is peaking sort of during the fall. At some stores, you can get it year round, but it's always best to try to eat seasonally because you know your food is coming from a more local source and that's when the nutrient richness is the highest. We're at number six of our bee vegetables. I added this to the list because I love them, but it's also just fun to say, batata. So batatas are a white sweet potato and they're native to South and Central America. They have like a reddish um, skin to them, but if you slice them open, unlike a yam or like a regular orange sweet potato, they're actually like white kind of beige inside. Um, they tend to be more dry than a typical sweet potato. Um, and the flavor after being roasted has this like light hint of vanilla. And so if you drizzle it with butter or you mash them with butter, they almost taste like a vanilla pound cake. They are so delicious. Okay. So how do you enjoy batatas? I like to roast them. You can also boil them if you're going to mash them. You can even microwave them and you can grill them. So if you're going to roast them, you want to roast them whole or in um, like thick rounds. And so you just preheat your oven to 425, wash and scrub the potato on the outside, then you poke a bunch of holes in it, and then you just bake it for about an hour. The holes allow the steam to escape and you just want it to be fork tender. Now you can also skin it ahead of time and then slice it into like thick rounds, kind of like I talked about with the butternut squash. And you can like bake these thick, almost little cakes. Um, and then that's only going to take about 35 to 40 minutes. So when we bake the rounds at our house. We will use this sometimes as a healthy dessert or a snack. And you kind of spread them with nut butter, a little cinnamon, maybe top them with some seeds um, or dark chocolate chips. And they are delicious. What are their magical powers? So batatas or sweet potatoes are packed with vitamins, minerals, and fiber. They promote eye health, boost immunity, and aid in digestion and support heart health. Enjoying batatas regularly can contribute to overall well-being and a healthy diet. And many people in the blue zones from around the world eat sweet potatoes or batatas like this regularly. So when are batatas in season? They are typically in season during the fall months, especially from September to December in many regions. Okay, so no more veggie ruts for you because you are now armed with six weeks worth of veggie adventures exploring vegetables that start with the letter B. 
And if you want to explore even more vegetables that start with the letter B, you can always try bamboo shoots, broccolini, black-eyed peas, and bell peppers, which yes, are technically a fruit, but in the culinary world, they're pretty much used as a vegetable. Remember when we teach our kids how to eat whole earth foods by leading with connection, curiosity, exploration, and fun. That's when the lifelong magic happens. As you eat your way through the letter B, feel free to tag us on Instagram at earthfoodfirst. As always, thanks so much for listening, for caring, and for being bold in the face of change. If you learned something today, it would mean the world for you to follow, rate, and review our podcast and share it with your favorite families. These actions will literally help the show go on. Find more Earth Food First goodness on Instagram at earthfoodfirst, on our website, earthfoodfirst.com. And don't forget to grab your letter B recipe links and our free veggies first guide. The link is in the show notes.